everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Oh Shoot. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you for listening. I I just want to say that I am Cassidy Lynn on Instagram. And the reason that I say that is because I had someone, well, I had a few people actually not realize that they listen to my podcast, but also follow me on Instagram and that I'm the same person. So hi, I'm Cassidy Lynn. Thanks for listening to my podcast. Today's a good episode, guys. Um, I have a lot to talk about. And I know when I'm choosing like the title of my episodes, it's really hard for me to pick one topic because I feel like I want to talk about more than one topic, right? Like naturally, I just have a lot to say. This is my podcast, you know? So today we are going to be talking about direct sun. I have a lot to say about shooting in direct sun, all of that. Like I have a lot to say about that, but I also have a lot of other things to say about other things. So I'm going to start by talking about some of like the random things that have been on my mind that maybe you can relate to, or maybe you feel you're feeling it with me. And we're going to talk about direct sun. I promise. So the first thing that I want to do is give you guys my life updates. You know, this is what we do. I need to tell you guys about my life. (laughs) I'll make this quick. Don't worry. I have three things. The first is I got my hair done. And actually this episode, if there's any episode to watch on YouTube, this would be a good episode because later on when we talk about direct sun, I'm going to be showing photo examples on YouTube. So if you're watching on YouTube... I got my new hair. Um, So we're just like a little bit chocolate brown with my hair. I was kind of like a caramel light brown for the summer. And I just was like, it's fall. Let's do something darker. My hair naturally is like black. So I do feel like the darker usually looks better on me. But I wanted to do light brown for the summer. And we're back with chocolate brown. It's definitely giving Hailey Bieber which is exactly what I wanted. Like I actually showed my hairstylist a picture of Hailey Bieber and she just did exactly what Hailey Bieber had, which I absolutely love that. So the next thing I did my merch shoot yesterday. So I've been kind of teasing on my Instagram about my new merch that's coming out. And I hadn't really set a launch date. I was just kind of waiting for all the products to come in. So My new merch is launching on Friday, so November 4th. So when you guys listen to this, it'll be like in four days, basically, at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to be basically just posting it on my Instagram is where you'll see it. Um, But I have a lot of cute new stuff, like so cute. I, one, designed like a sweat set, and that's probably one of my favorite items that I have for this drop. It's like it says photo club on it and it's like embroidered and it's like a gray sweat set. I think it's so cute. It's so comfy. Like I just want to wear all the time. So I was just trying to design like things that are a little bit different, um, but still cute and trendy. So we also have beanies. I have a dad hat that I'm launching as well. Um, and then I have some stickers too, which we love a good sticker. So yeah, th- my shoot was yesterday though. And it was so fun. I booked this studio that's like near me, but like the sun in the studio, I booked it so that like the sun would be coming through the windows during the shoot. So I was able to get a lot of fun, like direct sun, cute, like very vibey photos. And I think it's funny that we're talking about direct sun today because yesterday I literally was working with direct sun like all day. So yes, it's, the shoot yesterday was really cute. Like I love how the photos turned out. I was going for more of like a film. I don't know if you guys have seen like the skims, any of the skims photos or like Hailey Bieber's like road photos. Like I was just going for a little bit of like a soft creamy look to the merch photos with like a little bit of like direct flash. So that's what we got yesterday. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, the last life update. I went to South Carolina last weekend and I shot a wedding there. So it was like a really cute, intimate, like Airbnb wedding. And it was so fun. It was like right on the beach, super chill. I feel like that's really like my cup of tea is like 
where I feel like I can talk to like every single guest and like get photos of everyone. And yeah, I just, I really love intimate weddings. I like big weddings too, but like intimate weddings are just like a good change of pace as a wedding photographer. So yeah, it was great. My couple jumped in the ocean at the end. I actually posted a tutorial on my Instagram for how I got like the flash photos of them jumping in the ocean. So if you want to go look at that, that's on my Instagram and my TikTok. Um, so yeah, they jumped in the ocean. It was really, really cute. They like swam. She kind of changed into like this, this white romper, but she still had like her bouquet and like white gloves when she jumped in. So it was really cute. Um, and then when we got back to the Airbnb, one of the bridesmaids that jumped in the water discovered that a fish had latched onto her dress while she was swimming, like onto her bridesmaid's dress. It was like a foot long fish and it was like clamped onto her dress and like flopping around. It was crazy. I got obviously like got photos of like the couple with the fish and stuff. It just was like so random. I don't know. I just thought it was funny. Okay. So. We're going to do two little segments before we talk about direct sun. The first is just social media things, like just little tidbits of social media lessons that I'm learning currently. I feel like social media is always changing. So I feel like it's kind of good for me to talk about it pretty frequently on the podcast. So the first thing with social media lately that I've noticed, original audios on Instagram have been doing really, really well for me. So videos of me like talking, not necessarily original audios that I pull from TikTok and just post on Instagram, but videos of me like actually using my voice have been performing really well. And then when I'm using audios on Instagram, I've been finding that any audio that has been trending on TikTok for like a day or two, I can go over on Instagram and usually find it by that artist that made this, the song, if it's a song. And I can literally use that song, upload my video that I posted on TikTok a couple of days ago. And because that audio is just beginning to trend on Instagram, because it's a couple of days later, it performs well. So that's kind of what I've been learning about Instagram lately is like, original audios have been doing really well. And then like trending audios that if you can catch them at the beginning of the trend, those are the ones that really like hit it. And if you know a sound is going to start trending soon, like post multiple videos with that sound, like don't just limit yourself to one video with that sound. Um, the second thing that I've been doing on social media, and I don't know if you guys are going to agree or disagree with me on this one, but I have been scheduling some of my TikToks. I know. That's very scandalous. I know, I know. So what I've learned is TikTok, with the trends, you have to post them basically as they come. But there are some videos that you can schedule and they're they're going to just be good filler content and it's going to be good content to kind of feed the people that already follow you. I'm not necessarily scheduling videos that I want to blow up, but they're little things that are pretty easy for me to edit together and just schedule. And it's, I'm using these TikToks as like me, like, what am I trying to say here? I'm using these TikToks as like I'm like really struggling to come up with the words as an opportunity for me to post multiple times a day. So I've been trying to post more than once a day on TikTok because I've been finding that TikTok likes when I do that. My videos don't plummet in views like it only helps me. So in order to like lighten the workload a little bit, I'll try to post like a trending video and like do those on the fly, but then have my scheduled videos ready to go. Um, the thing with scheduling your TikToks. One, it usually has to be original audio. So for me, I've just been using like clips for my podcast or just like stuff that I've made before, like uh, behind the scenes shoots of my shoots and whatnot. Like that stuff I can just clip together and like Premiere Pro. So I'm doing it on my laptop. I'm editing these videos on my laptop and then scheduling them on TikTok. Um, so I will keep you guys updated to see if I keep doing this. Um, I think the thing that's hard for me is creating the content for it because 
if I'm recording it on my phone, I ha- you have to go on your desktop to schedule. You can't schedule from your phone on TikTok. So you kind of have to go the extra step and like create it on your phone and then go and put it on TikTok over there. Like there's no editing tools on TikTok desktop. So you have to have it completely ready to go by the time you go to upload it onto TikTok to be scheduled. So that's where the one dilemma is, is you either have to have a video editing software on your desktop or you need to like have it ready to go before then. I don't know. I will keep you guys posted on how that's doing. Um, The next thing I want to talk about is photography trends. I feel like I really have to fly through this episode because I have so much to say. So much. Okay. So I want to talk about photography trends. I'm just going to tell you guys how I'm feeling about some of the trends that I'm seeing lately. Um, And remember, these are just my opinions. They're not like set in stone and it's not like the end all be all what I say. So... The first trend, direct flash. This one gets a yes from me. Not only does it get a yes, it gets a mm, yes. So I'm saying mm, yes because direct flash, I feel like, is such a vibe. I love the colors from direct flash. I love how it looks like film. Um, I just, I love how to, I love editing direct flash. I feel like it just like, it's such a vibe. Like really it is the vibe and I love it. So direct flash is getting a yes from me. Slow shutter photos. So that's, you know, those photos where you kind of like knock your shutter down quite a bit, like one over 10, one over 20. And you kind of like move your camera a little bit, shake it while you take a photo. So then your subjects are still in it, but it's kind of like blurry. Um, I am also going to give this a yes, but I think it needs to be done correctly. Um, I think if your subjects are just kind of standing there, it doesn't feel as natural as like if it were running photo and it were blurry. I think the reason that we really like these blurry images, or I guess like the the uh, shutter low shutter photos, the reason we, we really like these are because they feel like they tell a story, like not only the story of the couple, but like actually what's happening. We physically see the movement with the camera being like dragged and like the shutter being lower. So I think it makes more sense if movement is involved. I don't necessarily know if I love it if um, the subjects are just standing still. I kind of do, but I also feel like you have to be very, um, very selective with the poses that you're using with a low shutter photo. So with that also comes out of focus photos. This also gets a yes from me. Um, You know, uh, maybe you accidentally hit focus on the tree behind you or like you're purposefully focusing somewhere else. I feel like that is, it's very tasteful. I feel like it has to be done correctly as well. I also feel like when you are focusing somewhere other than your subject, it's a little bit more creative. And I feel like if you're going to do that, the edit needs to be a little bit more creative as well. Like it, it can't just be like a blurry photo. I feel like it needs to like add in creative value to your gallery. So like if I take a blurry photo or even like a low shutter photo, I usually will like do a little bit of a different edit or maybe I'll do like black and white or I'll bump the grain up a little bit. I feel like all of those elements are like really just take a blurry photo from, okay, it's a blurry photo. Maybe it was an accident to like, this is purposeful. This is creative. This is art. So that's what I'm going to say about that. The last trend, (laughs) crooked horizons. How do we feel about crooked horizons, guys? I have so many mixed emotions and I feel like it really started with um, Kourtney Kardashian's wedding photos of her getting married in Italy and the photographer like purposefully like made the image crooked and like off kilter is that a word kilter off whatever she the photographer made the photos crooked and I don't know if it was on purpose or not but they weren't edited to be straightened they were crooked the final photos were crooked um I think that all of this, all of these trends really add to the storytelling element. And I almost feel like it adds 
different textures, visual textures to galleries. So when you use direct flash, you're adding a different texture to the photo, right? The different lighting. Um, when you're using like a sh slow shutter, that's another texture thing, like a visual texture. I don't know if that's even like the right phrase, but whatever. So I feel like with a crooked horizon line, it's another visual texture that really just adds a creative element to a gallery. Um, I do think they have to be used purposeful and purposefully and like tastefully as well. I, I don't feel like every single photo should be crooked. That's in my opinion. Like I think sometimes the element of straightening a photo does make your photos look more professional. But sometimes if you want your photos to feel like they were taken on a whim or like a little bit more candid, a crooked horizon does kind of communicate that. So for me, it's going to be a meh. It's not my favorite, but I will say I have delivered, I think, three photos in the past like week that have been crooked. So I, I'm doing things over here. I, look at me. Okay, guys, we are finally getting into today's topic, which is shooting in direct sun. Like I said at the beginning of this episode, I'm going to be putting photos with all of these examples and like all of these different lighting scenarios that I'm going to be talking about. So I'm going to put my work with it so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So if you want to be watching on YouTube, literally go to youtube.com slash Cassidy Lynn and my channel will pop up and this will pop up. Okay. So when it comes to shooting a direct sun, obviously the first element of this is the time of day. So the sun is different at different times of the day. And I think that's a huge thing that we need to think about when it comes to shooting in direct sun. What time of day is it and where is the sun going to be at that time of day? Obviously, a lot of people prefer to shoot at golden hour. But what we're talking about in today's episode is not the beautiful golden sunlight that you get from 6 to 9 p.m. We're talking about the sun that exists for the rest of the day from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Like that sun that is just brutal. It's bright. It beats down on you. It makes you sweat a little bit. That's the sun that I'm talking about. So the hardest thing to deal with, in my opinion, is when the sun is at its highest point. So usually around noon, depending on the time of year. For me, that is the hardest to deal with. So when you are picking your time to shoot, Pick your time of day very wisely. I do understand that like sometimes people can't shoot at 7 p.m. Like especially I find with a lot of photographers, it's because of family sessions and like children. Like that's usually the reason that a lot of people can't shoot in the evening or like jobs, whatever. But like if you're working a normal job, typically you're able to shoot in the evening. But there are going to be times where people are like, this is the best time for me to do photos is noon, 1 p.m., whatever. So when you are figuring out a time of day, try to get the earliest or latest slot possible with whoever you're booking with because of the fact that the sun is easier to work with the lower it is. So if you're shooting at noon, the sun is there. It's really, really bright versus 3 p.m. The sun is going down a little bit. So it's going to be a little bit easier to work with. It's it's probably going to still be just as bright, but it is easier to work with. Um, when it comes to time of day, if your client is like, hey, I can only shoot from noon to one. It's my lunch break. It's the only time I'm free. If that's the case, personally, I like to go and find places that have shade and I know are going to be shaded at that time of day. A really good example of this is downtown areas and like the city. Um, I know not everyone has the option to shoot downtown, but if you are able to find an area with buildings that can cast shade everywhere, that's going to be your best bet. Another example of like, like a place you would shoot that would provide shade also is like the forest. 
you know, if there are big looming trees, that's going to be a good um, place to go at high noon because you're going to get just shadows being cast um, in the shade. So downtown for me is usually the vibe. Honestly, the lighting that comes from, um, I think it's called indirect sun is what it's called. It's when the sun is out and it's bright, but you're in a spot of shade. That lighting is like brilliant. Um, a lot of influencers actually, when they take like outfit pics, will go in these spots of indirect sun to try and like, I don't know, it's, it, it gives like this, um, this amazing lighting. I don't know how else to describe it. It's just like really, really ideal. So if you find yourself needing to shoot in the middle of the day, try to find locations that are majority shaded. If obviously if that's the vibe you're going for. So here is what you do if you absolutely cannot avoid direct sun. It's not an option. You're not avoiding it. Here's what you're going to do. If you cannot avoid it, you are going to either work with the sun or hide in the shade. Okay. Those are your two options, right? Maybe you go inside, but I feel like that's a very rare answer. Like most likely you're not going to go inside if it's nice out for photos. So let's talk about the first option, which is full sun. Okay. So this is when your, your subject is fully lit. So when the sun is completely and fully on your subject. So when you are shooting like this, you want to avoid making shadows. So what you're going to do in full sun is have that sun fully on your subject so that there's not any shadows. Um, I find that like this type of lighting is really nice for like, I don't know, like selfies. Like you'll find like a lot of people when they go to take photos, like they'll try to find the sun and try to get that full sun look because it's really, really pretty. But at the same time, it's really blinding and it can be challenging for like editing. I feel like a lot of the times when you're shooting in full sun, the colors, um, they're a lot more vibrant and like a lot more hard to avoid. Like colors are there when you're shooting in full sun. So um, when you are shooting in this type of sun, avoid making shadows on your subject's faces. So like um, you want to position them so that they are evenly lit completely fully by the sun looking into the sun so it's going to be bright for them but like that 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 is that's what full sun is um so my camera settings for a situation like this because I do feel like this is something that is kind of tricky um my ISO is going to be at 50 um my camera can go to 50 if yours can't go that low go to 100 um, I like to shoot at the same aperture no matter what. So I'm always shooting at F2.2. At this point then, my shutter speed is just going to be as high as it needs to be in order to properly expose my subject. And especially because they're in direct sun, it's going to be super hella bright. Okay. So that means I'm probably going to be at like one over 2000 with my shutter. Direct sun can be a, bi can be a vibe. Oh my gosh. Did you guys just hear that? Can be a vibe. I literally said can be a vibe. Perfect. Direct sun can be. Uh, <laughs> I just literally just did it again. It's a vibe. I'm not, I'm not even going to try to say that sentence. Direct sun is a vibe, but sometimes it's not the vibe. Um, but I do like the vibe that comes with full sun specifically. Um, if you find that your subjects can't keep their eyes open in full sun, so I'm talking about them facing toward the sun, looking into the sun, you are shooting with the sun at your back. If your subjects are having a hard, hard time like opening their eyes, which happens more frequently than you think, give them a countdown. So your subjects staring into the sun, have them close their eyes, be like, okay, here's the pose. Are you ready? Like three, two, one, open your eyes. And then like take a bunch of photos. This will help them not like go blind while you're shooting, but also it, it's going to help just like 
accommodate them. It's really good customer service to be like, hey, I know you're struggling. Let me try to help. Here's a little trick for you. So the next option for shooting in full sun is shooting with the sun behind your subject. So like I said earlier, it's hard when the sun is at its highest. And for this specific technique, it's really hard. Because if the sun is at its highest and you are trying to put the sun behind them, that's hard because it's like the sun is at the top. Like, how are you supposed to not have crazy shadows? Like, how are you supposed to get the sun behind them? So this is why I try to shoot when the sun has gone down just a little bit. Um, It is important to remember, though, that like, the sun is never going to be directly above your subject. There's always going to be a point where the sun is just a little bit one way or the other. So you can get the sun behind your subject. Like don't give up. I personally, if I am put into an open field where it's bright and sunny and I'm told go shoot, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the sun behind my subject and take photos like that. Um, It's going to make the background and like the foreground and all of that really bright, but it is going to cast an even shadow. Like your subjects are going to be shaded on their front side because the sun's behind them. So it's going to be even lighting. Um, So that's kind of why I, I would prefer backlit instead of like full direct sun and having them face towards the sun. Um, If I can't find any shade, this is going to be what I'm doing. Um, I think my preference would be finding shade and then backlit and then full sun. Um, I think that editing backlit photos, though, can be really tricky. I don't think that editing backlit golden hour photos is tricky. I think editing direct sun backlit photos is hard because I find that, like, everything brightens up like so much. So for example, if I'm in like an open field and it's like green grass and I'm shooting full sun, like with the sun behind my subjects, like that grass is like really like, it's almost as if the luminance were turned up on the grass and that that's hard to edit. It's really hard to like edit that type of photo for some reason. So, um, when you are shooting with the sun behind your subjects, though, you want to watch out for shadows um, because it can be pretty easy to like slowly start rotating throughout a session where then the sun like is just a little bit ca- casting like a little bit of like a side. Um, what is the word? Like it's just like a the sun is becoming a little bit more prominent on like one side of the face and casting just a little bit of shadow that's what you want to avoid so be very very aware of the sun and what it looks like especially as you're shooting backlit because just the slightest turn could expose some parts of the face to the sun and that's where you start to have difficulties with editing that's when it starts to get a little hard so my preference is going to be finding a patch of shade And I'm going to put some photos on the screen if you're watching on YouTube of me finding patches of shade, even though it was like full sun and it still being absolutely gorgeous. Um, I find that if you put your subject in shade, um, typically it's going to be like a tree or a rock or a building. And it's going to give you that nice indirect light. I still am keeping an eye on the sun, though, and you want to keep that spot as backlit as possible. If you have found a spot of shade, that means that spot is backlit already, right? Because of the way that shadows work. It wouldn't be casting a shadow if it wasn't backlit. Um, But just keep that in mind as you're using that piece of shade. Keep that sun behind them. You can't shoot every single direction in that little tiny patch of shade because then you're going to get like full sun. If you you shoot, (laughs) this is very hard to explain. If you find a patch of shade under a tree, okay, and you shoot with that sun still behind that tree and you shoot that direction, that's going to be perfect lighting. If you rotate so then the sun is blasting on the other side, it's like behind your subjects, but your subjects are still in the patch of shade, 
that's going to be really hard to edit because your background's going to be overexposed. Your subjects are going to be underexposed. So to help with exposure, keep that patch of shade and keep that sun behind you in the patch of shade. So um, I find that these little patches of shade really have saved me in a lot, a lot of situations. For example, this past wedding that I shot in South Carolina, um, we did the first look, I think, at 1 or 2 p.m. And there was a location that had really pretty, like, trees over top. And, like, they were, like, these willowing trees. So it created super awesome shade. And it was perfect for photos. Like, literally could not have been better. So just find locations like that and keep those in the forefront of your mind in case you do run across a time where someone needs a little bit of shade in their life. If it's a family session or whatever, a first look, like you need those spots. Actually, now that I'm talking about it, most of the weddings that I shoot, we do a huge chunk of photos from like 1 to 3 p.m., like most people want to do their first look before their ceremony. And usually ceremonies are around four or five, which means all of the photos are happening before then. There's no avoiding that. There's no getting around that. So this is going to be a really, really like helpful little tip. If you find yourself in a scenario where you're shooting at that time of day a lot, find shade, shoot backlit, shoot evenly lit with full sun. Um, another option is to let the shadow shine through. So this is not something that I personally love stylistically. You can position your subjects so that half of the, s- the sun is on half of their face and then shade like shading on the other side. But I don't love the way that this looks, um, specifically because I find that there are areas on the face that are kind of n- not flattering to have in the shadows. So like like under your eye sockets. Like if you have the sun, like if you're doing kind of partial sun, if the eye sockets are dark, like that kind of, it's it's weird. Like it, your subjects kind of look like sleep deprived or like they're just like creepy looking because like their eye sockets are black. Like, so that's one of the reasons I don't love this method. Um, also, I find that sometimes underneath the nose, like above the lip, You can get a shadow, and I think that's not super flattering. So it can be a mood. Um, I'm going to say that, like, usually if I'm using shadows in my photos, it's all for, like, a mood. And I I actually have a couple photos in my head where I shot in, like, full sun, and I put my subjects half, like, partial sun. So we – I had half of their face in the sun and the other half – shaded and like in the shadows and it was a vibe okay but I think the pose that you do has a lot to do with the mood as well so if you're going for like a shadowy moody look make sure that the poses that you're doing are also like moody um to go along with that shadow vibe um a lot of the times I find that if you are just learning photography like that shadow, like unintentional shadows across the face are actually kind of what sets apart someone that's a little bit more experienced and someone that is just beginning and doesn't necessarily know all of the best lighting techniques. Um, So that's kind of why I usually avoid shadows too, because one, I don't think it's flattering, but two, like I think sometimes like that that work of someone that isn't as experienced will have more of those shadows because they're not necessarily thinking about that. Um, So, you know, that's something to think about as well when you're doing lighting. Um, So let's talk about indoor direct sun. So believe it or not, you can still shoot indoors and get direct sun. Perfect example of this was my merch shoot that I did um, yesterday. I guess at this point it'd be like multiple days ago, but I was shooting indoors, but the the where we had the backdrop, the window was like right there. Like it had really good natural light, but the sun was starting to come through the windows and literally onto the backdrop, which I thought was kind of cute. Like I thought it was a vibe. Um, 
when the sun is like that, though, you have a few options. Um, you can either have your subject face the sun fully and get, you know, that nice, full, even lighting. And you're just kind of like shooting it, vibing with it. You can turn your subject so that they're half facing a window and half with their face in the shadows. That's going to be a little bit more of that moody look. Sometimes with like boudoir photos, that's a, a real mood. And I feel like that can be really cute. But a lot of the times I find myself not wanting to do that as often. And then if you have your subject turning away from where the sun is coming in through a window, that's going to give you that backlit option as well. Um, a lot of the times if I am shooting like getting ready photos for a wedding, I will either have whoever's getting dressed stand directly in front of the window so I get backlit or I have them kind of face out the window and I shoot over to the side so I'm still getting them in that full like natural full sun and it's like better lighting like that as well so I feel like inside you kind of have to turn your angles a little bit to get more of like to get more of like better lighting I don't know I honestly that's please ignore that sentence I just said that was not even a good sentence so okay Let's reel it in here. The last thing I want to talk about for direct sun is lens flares. A lot of people, I feel like you either love or you hate lens flares. Let me know what one you guys like. I personally love a good lens flare. I feel like it's just so pretty. Like, I don't know. I feel like you can't get great lens flares on like an iPhone camera. So I feel like it just like really... I feel like it just looks really good on a camera. I don't know. So I think lens flares can be annoying at times, but they're also pretty. Um, and they're annoying because they're hard to edit out. Like once you get a sun flare, you have a sun flare. It's really hard to get rid of. So some people struggle with that. Like some people want to get rid of a sun flare. I don't mind it. But, you know, for some people, it's a little bit of an annoyance. Um, if you want a sun flare, though, if that's something that you're going for, Here's what you're going to do. You're going to shoot directly in the sun. So obviously you're going to need the sun to be somewhere visible to have a sun flare, right? You're like, no, duh, Cassidy. Thank you. You're welcome. So if you want a sun flare, I would recommend like either getting the sun, like you shooting towards the sun or putting the sun just a little bit out of frame. Um, Cause sometimes that gives you a little bit of a flare as well. And usually you can see a lens flare in your viewfinder anyway. So keep an eye on your viewfinder and just kind of like peep around and like look to see what angle you need to get a sun flare. I feel like a lot of it just has to do with the sun reflecting off your sensor and creating a pretty flare. Um, yeah, so you can take test shots too. Like if you want a sun flare, take a couple of test shots, kind of see how it looks and, you know, just memorize like, okay, in this spot with like the lighting a little bit like this, this is a perfect sun flare. Um, in order to get a sun flare though, you have to put the sun behind your subject. That's how you usually get the flare. So you want to avoid obviously putting your subjects facing the sun because then you're not going to be able to get a flare. So if you're going for a sun flare look backlit or having some shadows, um, that's going to be the best option for finding that flare. Um, I do find though that like you really should for the most part avoid shooting like with your s lens like directly at the sun and I don't want to say avoid because I do it all the time but I do find that if you don't want the sun flare that's what you should avoid um, yeah if you want a sun flare to like the sun has to be visible. You can't just put it behind your subject's heads. So you really have to be aware of where the sun is to get that good sun flare. Um, like I said, it's hard to remove once you have a sun flare. So um, keep an eye on that. Um, I also sometimes will add a little bit of a sun flare in Lightroom after. Um, I did just post a video about this as well. It's so easy. You can like take a brush and you just like put it where you think that the sun would be. So you mask over the area that you feel like 
the sun should be shining through based on the lighting that you have. So if you're going to do a fake sun flare, make sure that you are paying attention to where the sun is naturally in your photo. So then it doesn't look ag- abnormal and like <laughs> literally like unnatural. So that's going to be one little thing to remember. Like make sure if you're doing a fake sun flare, it has to match up with the lighting of your original photo. Um, so what I do is I do like a little mask off to the side or wherever I want my sun flare to be. And then what I'll do is I'll bring up the exposure on that mask. I'll usually bring down the dehaze and the clarity in my head. I think, what does the sun flare do to photos, right? It makes it brighter in certain areas. It makes it warmer and usually makes it hazy. So that's what I do in the mask. Then I'm mimicking all of those things that I notice. So up my exposure, down my dehaze, down my clarity, and then I'll bring up my temperature as well. Sometimes I might even bring up my tint if I feel like a sun flare is usually a little bit more green or pink or whatever, like I'll do that. Um, And you can just kind of mess around with where you feel like the sun naturally would be in the image. I know a lot of people will use like the radial filter. So they'll do like an actual circle, like mask where they want the sun to be. And then just like, do that. Um, you know, that, that's fine. I find that it looks a little bit more natural when I just freehand a brush and make it a sun flare. Speaking of masks and masking in Lightroom, um, this is very random, but Lightroom classic just updated to the 2023 version. And I don't know if you guys have seen like all of the updates that they've done, but like there are some insane updates. Like you, it like auto detects certain people. It auto detects areas of the face. So you can like auto detect on this person, just their teeth and just whiten the teeth. And you don't have to do any brushing. Like Lightroom is able to tell where those areas are, which I think is absolutely amazing. So it's crazy. If you haven't updated your Lightroom, go do it. It's going to change your life. If you do a lot of masking, you can literally like the other options too, like there's the option to just mask the entire background, just the sky. There's the option to like mask one person, two person, just the sub, like the subjects, both of them or just one person. Um, the only thing that I've noticed though, and someone actually commented this on one of my videos and I was like, oh, I didn't even notice until now. Lightroom got rid of the done button. So like when you're done with a mask, you have to like scroll in the mask window and hit close instead of the done button just being at the bottom right hand corner of your window so it's a little annoying but besides that I've thoroughly been enjoying the new Lightroom update so go update your Lightroom that's it for today's episode guys I'm rambling thank you so much for listening and for being here it means the world to me I would love for you to rate and review my podcast that is something that I read reviews guys. So like, I would love to hear your feedback. I would love to hear if you're loving the podcast, I would love a review because you guys mean so much to me. So thank you so much. Again, I, I hope you have learned so much about shooting direct sun. Like I hope this episode just enlightened you so much. Yes, that was a pun. Yes, yes, yes. I, I know I'm, I'm a comedian. I'm so funny. All right. Have a great day. I hope everyone enjoyed this episode. Peace out. Expose my mind to clarity. Oh, my spirit shudders. Capture the moment or keep my sanity. Wisdom rushing in. So much clearer now Getting a little bit higher With every step I take I'm getting good Getting a little bit better I'm climbing to the top Never gonna stop I'm getting good, oh